What if I told you Jesus came to abolish religion? What if I told you voting Republican really wasn't his mission? What if I told you Republican doesn't automatically mean Christian, and just because you call some people blind doesn't automatically give you vision? I mean, if religion is so great, why has it started so many wars? Why does it build huge churches but fails to feed the poor? Tell single moms God doesn't love them if they've ever had a divorce, but in the Old Testament, God actually calls religious people whores. Religion might preach grace, but another thing they practice, tend to ridicule God's people, they did it to John the Baptist. They can't fix their problems and so they just mask it, not realizing religion's like spraying perfume on a casket. See, the problem with religion is it never gets to the core. It's just behavior modification like a long list of chores. Like, let's dress up the outside, make it look nice and neat. But it's funny, that's what they used to do to mummies while the corpse rots underneath. I have with me Jefferson Bethke. He's a poet and a graduate of Oregon Pacific University with a degree in political science. He is currently living in Tacoma, Washington, and worked for Jubilee Reach. It's a nonprofit organization that bridges the gap between the city and the church. And he has a video where he's rapping about Jesus and religion or spirituality and religion. And uh, the video is very, very interesting. Over 14.5 million viewers. Uh, Jefferson, you are a Christian, right? Yeah, love Jesus. Love Jesus. All about him. You love Jesus. And are you a Democrat or Republican? I'm, I'm all political. I don't, I'm, I'm neither. You neither. Do you vote? Uh, yes, I do vote. And how do you tend to vote, Republican or Democrat? Well, I haven't voted yet in an election, so we'll see. So you never vote? You have never well, voted? I mean, well, not in, the pro- not in the presidential or anything, you know, because I'm only 22. Oh, so. okay. Um, I'm a youngin'. Let me ask, in this first video, in this, the, one, the introduction that I played, why did you mention a Republican? That's a great question. Um, to me, it could have gone either way. My point I was trying to prove there was... Um, that it's all about Jesus. You know, there's a book I just read by um, Tolian and Javidjan. He's uh, the grandson of Billy Graham, and he has a book called Jesus Plus Nothing Equals Everything. And that's what I realized is that in 1 Corinthians 15, um, the Apostle Paul calls the gospel of first importance, which he says there's some type of deference with the gospel, meaning it should be elevated above other secondary issues. And I just, I, um, I get leery sometimes that I think we, um, we try to add something to Jesus, like Jesus plus whatever party you vote for, Jesus plus do you believe in spiritual gifts, Jesus plus what church do you go to? And, and when you do that, you're, you're taking away and you're minimizing the cross and the ultimate awesome um, free grace of Jesus. And so I wasn't really spoken at either party. I was just using that as a, as a example to say, um, it's about Jesus. Let's just go back to him and make him of first importance. It gave me the impression that you recognize that the Republican platform is about the principles of Jesus, whereas the Democratic platform is about the principles of Satan. I'm not really going to answer that one. I have no idea. Like I said, I'm not really, I wasn't coming to totally talk about politics. You know, I'm, I, like I said, yeah. Jesus, uh, Jesus plus nothing equals everything. And that's why I said, it doesn't matter what party you vote for, what church you go to, if you believe in the gifts, if you want to have a beer or not, sometimes it's just Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus and does he transform your life? What is the difference between Jesus and religion? Um, for me, they're, they're polar opposites because, like I say in the poem, religion is about trying to go to God. It's trying to muster up enough strength, muster up enough good deeds, muster up enough behavior, and then present it to God and say, look, God, aren't I good enough? When, when the beauty and the weight and the reality of Jesus is that he came and pursued us while we didn't even want him, Romans 5 eight says, and that he offers us salvation and free love and grace, if only we admit that we can't do it, and then we want Him. And it's just, it's a beautiful reality, and it's something that transforms the heart. And so should we get away from religion, the idea of religion, and be and focus more on Jesus? Um, well, how, how are you defining religion in that question? The way I defined it? Or yes, the way you just define it. Yeah, well, I, well essentially, I can, I can answer that rephrasing it. Yes, I would love to get away from legalism, hypocrisy, self-righteousness. You talk about um, your past. I didn't impress that you don't sin now. Do you still sin? Oh, yeah, all the more. I mean, it's not, but I have grace that covers me and grace that transforms me. So, so it's, not, it's not that I don't sin. So, so being a Christian isn't that I'm better than anyone. It's that I know the King and I know Jesus, and He represents me, which now means I have freedom to struggle. That's the beauty of the cross, uh-huh. is that God knew we were going to be messy. God knew we were going to need help, and God knew we were going to be broken and fumble and stumble and actually need His grace. So you are sinning more now that you know Jesus than you did prior to knowing him. 
No, I mean, I came off wrong. I meant, when I said that, I didn't mean that. I was trying to quote, quote Romans 6, where Paul, the Apostle Paul actually says, you know, shall you sin all the more so that grace may increase? And he says, may it never be. So that's not what I meant. I was saying that um, I still sin, and I'm trying to grow every day into more, into his likeness and more into his image. Um, and by his grace, I'm doing that, and then I continue to put off sin. The only thing is I no longer try to hide it. When it's there, I say, Jesus, will you come deal with this? Will you come help me? Was Jesus of sin, or was he sinless? Jesus was sinless, and, and that, that, that's all throughout the Scriptures, that Jesus was sinless, that he had the ability to sin, but he never did, which made him a perfect high priest, Hebrews says, which means that since he was sinless, he was able to play that middle role that no one will ever play again in history as the fully God and fully man. So he was 100% man and, and sinless to be a perfect sacrifice, but only God has the power to forgive sin. But only man has the ability to pay for it. And so what we, what we believe in Christ, who believed in his Father God, who did not sin, don't we have a new nature, which is a sinless nature now? Oh, totally. I'm, I'm right there with you, Jesse. Do you attend a church right now? Yeah. What's the name of your church? Uh, Mars Hill. Mars Hill. Oh, okay. Have you ever heard of a Reverend Mark Driscoll? I have. But this, I thought this interview was. I thought this interview was about the uh, the poem and stuff. It is, but just just I read this and I just want to clarify: Is he the founder of Mars Hill? I believe he would be, but that's um, you'd have to go to MarsHill.com to look that up. Oh, okay. How has this changed your life? This video. Um, I'm not totally sure of the ramifications yet. To be honest, I'm just a 22 year old guy who graduated college about six or seven months ago, and so um, it's been a little overwhelming, but awesome at the same time and, and, a, and a, a God thing. And so I'm trying to just take in the opportunities and, and think and pray through them, and we'll, we'll see where that leads in the future. My final question for you, you seem a little on edge when I ask about Reverend Mark Driscoll, and is there something that we need to know about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. I just, I just, was, um, I just didn't want to go a route. Any, it had nothing to do with Mark. It just, I just wanted to make sure to stick to the poem because that was just something that someone told me. It's just, hey, when someone tries to go somewhere else, just bring it back to the poem. So I was just trying to put my uh, college degree to work there. Oh, I see. I, uh, the reason I asked about him, I, I had him on my show last week, and he put his tail between his legs and ran. He was set for an hour or so, and he couldn't take the heat, so he got out of the kitchen. The kitchen and when, when the folks heard that you were coming on, they mentioned to me that you were a member of Mars Hill, was one of the churches that that guy Driscoll founded. And so that's why I yeah, asked. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love Pastor Mark. I love what he's doing. And I mean, if you, if you just look into the fruit of that church, that was one of the reasons I started going there as well. Man, they, they transform lives with the gospel of Jesus. And it's really awesome to see the work they're doing there. Right. And, and again, you don't literally hate religion. You're just, as I'm understanding it, are you, you're saying that Jesus is the way to go, and he was about the Spirit and not necessarily a religion. Um, I don't know what you mean by that. So I'm not sure. Jefferson, thanks for coming on, man, and I uh, wish you well in what you're doing. Dude, I appreciate it, man. It was a fun time. All right, buddy. Because he took the crown of thorns and the blood dripped down his face. He took what we all deserve. I guess that's why you call it grace. And while being murdered, he yelled, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Because when he was dangling on that cross, he was thinking of you. And he absorbed all your sin and he buried it in the tomb, which is why I'm kneeling at the cross saying, come on, there's room. So for religion, no, I hate it. In fact, I literally resent it. Because when Jesus said, it is finished, I believe he meant it. Oh, I had not heard that part. <laughs> oh, that was another uh, sound bite from a Jefferson Bethke YouTube video. You can go on YouTube and watch that video for yourself, make your own decision about it. It was interesting, though, when I asked about Reverend Mark Driscoll and the fact that he's a member of Mark's Hill Church. You can see the tension change there, something come up. The guy's a little young guy. He, he's just starting out. Leave the guy alone. Oh, have mercy. Leave the boy alone. I'd rather have him singing about Jesus than to be out there killing somebody.